Yo, what's up, folks? Uh, Will here once again for another Fight Card Prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC London from the O2 Arena uh, in London, obviously, uh, as Darren Till faces off against Jorge Masvidal in the main event of a really, really good European fight card. Uh, over the years, we've had a lot of complaints from the, the guys over here about the quality of the fight card. I don't think they can complain about this. This is a, a really solid fight card from the top to the bottom. Good fights throughout the card. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a little bit... Uh, myth that I never got the opportunity to kind of go down. I couldn't get the time off work to actually go down to to London to get to this event. But um, yeah, solid, solid event. Uh, looking forward to breaking it down. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you're getting bets going, there's a lot of good lines actually for this card. Uh, I've seen a lot of bets already made. So if you've got bets for this card, leave them down below uh, and tell me who you're betting this week. Also, um, if you disagree with any of my picks, let me know. We had a couple of good ones last week and some disagreements. For, I think the Zaleski one via submission, why I think it was. Uh, nice call on that one there. Last week was a not a great week again. I'm kind of struggling, I'll be honest. So hoping that can pick up and I can get a bit more consistent with it. Underdog bet of the week was garbage. <laughs> so my apologies on that. Tim Boach didn't do great there. He just did not show up. And Akhmadov, to be fair, I thought a composed... Um, Composed fight, didn't really blow his gas tank out like I thought he might and uh, went and won the fight. So fair dues to him. But like I said, I need to try and pick up um, heaviest baiting loss uh, about a year last week as well. Lost all four bets, pushed two bets um, kind of late on, which I should never put money down on. I think I, cause I had too much time in my hands. Uh, I made two bets I shouldn't have, but we're on to this card now, so uh, we're going to get started and get fired through this as soon as we possibly can. So, yeah, we are starting in the featherweight division with the debut in Mike Grundy against Nad Naramani here. And this is a close fight. Nad Naramani, um, gritty, gritty competitor, very, very hard to look good against. Um, nothing really shines out with this guy. Traditionally comes from a, a wrestling background. Um, Trains out of Team Alpha Male. And I think he went over there full time, which is uh, a big commitment from the someone from the UK to move over, over to California full time and uh, move move his family over there to get a better training for him. A uh, couple of fights in the UFC. Khalid Taha. Uh, that was a bit of a scrap. Um, won that one there. I think he was always better than what Khalid was. Khalid was up for it fighting in his home country and so on. And then Anderson Dos Santos. That was a spirited performance by Dos Santos. That wasn't a an easy fight for Nar Naramani whatsoever. Um, and had used kind of all of experience to come through that there against that a game game guy uh, in Anderson Dos Santos. Like I say, with, with his skill set, nothing really really stands out. It's just a, a well well rounded, but kind of well rounded mixed martial arts. Just a tough guy to look good against. Um, been five rounds before, which is always something to to kind of have a, a feather in your cap regarding that, going 25 minutes. Um, I thought he looked fairly gassed in his last fight against Dos Santos, but managed to pull through there against the guy coming in there on short notice. Mike Grundy, he has a bronze medalist in the, the Commonwealth Games 2014, trains out of Team Kaibon in Liverpool, uh, Darren Till's gym. And uh, what this guy is all about, wrestling. That's really... Uh, when you watch his fights, I know he lost to, I think it was Damien Stasek, a former UFC vet. and But that was like six months into his, his MMA career against a guy who'd been fighting for a long, long time and uh, lost that one there. But really, as a guy, he hasn't really fought all that much in the last kind of couple of years. Uh, was looking to go on the Liverpool card last year. Uh, never got on there, and then he, I don't think he's even fought since then. Actually, if I remember right, he might have actually had his fight in Japan. I'm not actually sure that that one's kind of skipping my mind a little bit. But what this guy is really good at is his wrestling. His chain wrestling is something that's really good. Now he's going to come out here. I don't think he's going to want to stand with Naraman. He's going to look to try and engage in in tie ups in wrestling positions, push him against the cage. Like I say, Nar Nar Naramani's background is from a wrestling kind of background. Nowhere near as good as what Grundy's is. Naramani puts it all together a little bit better, but Grundy's one good skill set is really, really good. Now, it's interesting to see how it's going to look here, um, stepping up and uh, facing an opponent like this, because he faced Michael Tobin on, uh, I think it was ACB, which he's got a fairly decent record, but it was very comprehensive. He used his wrestling. Guy um, 
just kind of kept him there and won the fight through that. Uh, so this is really interesting to me. I've seen a lot of action in um, Mike Grundy. UK books, he came out plus 225. I thought that if, if you got on that, that I think that's a, a fairly decent bet. I see this fight being close. It's whether Grundy can do enough. If he, if he can get into the ground, I think he can win rounds. I can maybe see Naramani being great enough to get back to his feet, but I can see maybe Grundy holding him down for, for various spots in this fight and winning the fight through that. So uh, I don't think I've really got the best of reads on this one. But I like Mike Grundy to win. I think he's wrestling and he's uh, how he goes from one position to another. Really, really, it's something that's really, really good. It's something I like seeing. Catch wrestling is, it is a very, very big art form where you move, you just don't stop and you look for that to, to, to get that takedown. I'll go Mike Grundy via a very close decision. I can see it being a split. Not super confident, but I'll take a shot in underdog in, in his debut. But like I say, it's hard picking debut fighters, honestly. Uh, even last week, Grant Dawson, who I was kind of super confident, he, he saw a lot of kind of bad tendencies in his game. Uh, and he's, I don't think he's nowhere near as good as what I kind of thought he was. So, um, And then obviously with Jeff Hughes and so on as well. I'll pick Mike Grundy's split decision. Molly McCann, Priscilla Cachoeira. Um, I saw Molly McCann at minus 185 and I was like, eesh. And that line's gone up. So people are betting at that. And I can see why, because... I mean, that fight Priscilla had last year against... I'm, I'm happy she took a year off, by the way. That fight she had against um, Valentina Shevchenko was horrific. She took an absolute beating in that one, and that should, that fight should have never, ever been made um, at all. I don't care where it is in the world, you just don't put, make that fight. It was horrid. Um, took a lot of damage in that one. Very, 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 very bad uh, defensive striking she she leaves her hands down she looks to throw like her strikes are very loopy she's wide open for counter strikes um mccann's a bit smaller so she's going to struggle to i think get maybe to the chin of catchweta but like i said priscilla leaves her hands very low just asking to be hit um and that's what molly's kind of game plan is if you've got any kind of wrestling or grappling background i think you're going to run through molly mccann fairly uh, not run through her, but I think you're gonna you're gonna have a really good chance. Like Gillian Robertson did, took her down, submitted her. Uh, she looked like a bit like a fish out of water down there. But in a striking battle, it might actually um, both girls might actually like that kind of more aspect more here. I'm gonna go Molly McCann. I think uh, she's got a bit more output. I think she she will keep going. I think she's won a rebound after that loss in Liverpool, which was I know was rough on her. Um, and catch where it's just defense is not great whatsoever. I'm kind of hoping that's all improved. Seeing that Molly McCann is nowhere near the the type of fight that Valentina Shevchenko is, so it, this might be more to her level. I just feel like Molly McCann's got a little bit more here. Uh, I'm going to pick up your decision. Next up, Danny Henry against Dan Ige. Uh, Danny Henry from Scotland. He's he literally lives like five minutes away from where I am, so he's not overly that far away. Um, Really impressive in his two UFC fights. I still think we've got a lot to see out of him. Uh, took a really, really tough start in uh, Daniel Tamer. That was a short notice fight where uh, Tamer came in and really kind of let him up in that first round. But then he showed the grittiness, the toughness that the guy's got. He, he keeps a good pace, keeps a good length, um, a good volume. And that really showed in rounds two and three. And he really broke down Daniel Tamer in that, uh, in that fight in Glasgow a couple of years ago. Came out against Hakim Dawudu, uh, did not see that coming. Honestly, did not see that coming, especially that quick. Caught him with a big right hand that really kind of stumbled Hakim. Then he locked up a guillotine choke and absolutely, he just put him to sleep. It was a horrible, horrible, I just spat everywhere, sorry. Uh, horrible, horrible guillotine choke. Um, caught him out there and the guys went 2-0. and And uh, yeah, by the way, I can see all the people in the YouTube chat. I appreciate that. Um, Hi, guys. But, um, yeah, I've faded him both times. And he's actually called me out in it. We, I last, uh, I seen him, no, it wasn't the last time. I seen him in Liverpool. I was watching Gina Mazzani, Lena Landsberg, and I was like, I'm going to go for a hot dog. Went and got a hot dog. Lo and behold, Danny Henry and Stevie Ray are behind me in the line. And Danny says, so I hear you're picking against me again. And I'm like, yeah, I keep picking against you, but you keep on winning, so I might just keep on doing that. Um, I'm going to, pick against them here again, actually. So, uh, Danny Gay, 
really, really tough fighter. Keeps a, a really good pace. He's got really good takedowns. Um, the only thing that really concerns me about Danny here is that he might start fading. I think Danny could come in and start putting it on him. And that's what I'm a little bit worried about if I was betting Dan Yee because I think he's got the grappling advantage. I really do. I think he can take this fight to the mat and dominate down there. Henry is the bigger guy lengthwise. So I, I think he will find a way to get back to his feet. But I just, I'm not sure that he can stop the takedowns of Dan Yee consistently. And uh, on the feet, I think that he, he could use that length to his advantage. Um, he, like I say, Ige's conditioning. In the second and third, kind of concerns me. And I'm like, I said, I'm not going to bet this fight. If I was going to bet anything, it'd be the dog and Danny Henry. But um, I just think the grappling is going to be too much. Obviously, I hope Danny wins. 100%. The more Scots that win the UFC, the better it is for the country. The, the bigger opportunity we've got for the, the biggest brand to come back to Glasgow and put on fight cards here, which the two fight cards we've had here have been fantastic. Great atmospheres and really fun uh, fight nights. I just, uh, I still think we need to learn a little bit more about Danny Henry. I really do. Uh, I think that last fight was, maybe people are, are blowing him up a little bit too much after that Dawido. He had That's what you have to do against Hakim. You have to get in his face and heart and quick because if he sets a, a pace, then it could be very, very difficult to to, to get into that fight because his striking is so so good and his speed is so good as well. I'm going to go Danny Gay to win via decision. A very close decision, but I think his grappling will be the main focus of this fight and I think that's what, that's what will win him the fight. Moving on, Tom Breeze against Ian Heinish. Super impressive from Ian Heinish coming in short notice in Argentina against a vet in uh, Cesar Ferreira, who he's actually replacing here, who's supposed to face Tom Breeze. Uh, showed uh, not the greatest takedown defence. Matante has got good entries into takedowns, got good trips and so on. But what I did like, the guy never gave up and found a way to get back to his feet. Looked for some like commuter sweeps. It just did, uh, got a hold of uh, body limbs to just try and put off Fajera and to open other opportunities to get back to his feet. And he did that super, super well. And like I said, I was very impressed with that performance from Ian Heinish in that fight. Um, I'm not overly sure. I think Breeze is the bigger guy here. But, uh, yeah, looking at it, I think that, um, I think it's a close fight. I really do. I've seen a lot of people, actually, the bet lines came way down on this one. I think I've seen Heinish up at plus 150, I want to believe. Um, and it's came down to plus 110, I see now. So, that's a big, big drop, and actually, I think by fight time, Tom Breeze is going to be an underdog. And uh, yeah, Tom Breeze, big guy, six three, um, southpaw striker, came into the UFC, looked very, very good. But again, it was against guys. Uh, I'm not going to say they're not good guys because they made UFC level, but Luis Dutra knocked him out in the first. Cahal Pendred, um pretty much ended his career there and then. Keita Nakamura, no matter how many times I watched that fight, I think he was a minus, I want to say 1,100 or 11, 1,200 under a uh, favourite to win that fight. That is crazy. And I thought actually Nakamura won that fight. Um, had a couple of instances in there where he, I think he had a fight and then he pulled out fight day due to anxiety and so on, which is a little bit, eh. he's had some injuries, which is a little bit concerning, I think, to knees and so on. Um Last time out looked fantastic against Dan Kelly, but he had such a speed advantage and such a length, power advantage in that fight. And just, I think, an overall quality of fighter advantage over Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly was tough, but he was old, and he, he was he kind of reached his limit with some of those wins that he had beforehand. And this one here, this is it's an interesting fight, this one to me. Um, I think they match up really, really well. I think... If you got Heinish at the, those bigger dog odds, I would definitely have took the, the shot there. But honestly, if Tom Breeze hits plus money, I think I might go there. I, like I say, I'm going to pick Tom Breeze. This is another fight I'm like super close. It seems to be the way with this fight card early on, where I think they could have some close, close matchups. Um, like I say, Tom Breeze, I think if he stays composed on the feet and picks his shots... Um, he could maybe get at Ian Heinish, but Heinish is tough, man. Heinish has impressed me in his, his fights that I've seen um, in the UFC, in the LFA. He's got a great story behind him regarding being in jail and so on. And um, I think 
comes from a wrestling background, comes from a really good camp in uh, Colorado. So he's, I think he's, he's, he's conditioning and he's gas tank. I know he's come in here on short notice, but it's definitely a lot longer than his last fight was. He's going to pose Tom, Tom Breeze problems. Uh, I see this more as a pick'em fight. So it's interesting to see who's going to be the favourite by fight time. Uh, I'm going to pick Tom Breeze via decision, though. Close, close, close split decision, but like not super confident, if I'm being honest with you there. But I'll go with Tom Breeze to, to get the the decision there. Moving on, uh, I don't know really how to pronounce this name. Nikolai uh, Negar- Negomarenu. There we go. I'll try that. Again, Saperbek Safarov. Uh, I did the MMA Huddle podcast and I picked Nick and I said in that one, it's like I never, I did not watch any fights regarding that. Went back and watched some of his fights. Oof, Jesus. Um, his, the people that he has faced to get that 9-0 record are not great. Fighting out of Romania. Um, got some big throws, but it's against guys with really weak, weak records. Um like seven and fourteen, and uh, I want to say like two and sixteen. He's fought absolute cans in that one there, and like I made the pick off that. Um, just what I've seen from like a, f- a few of the fights and I, I, some of something else. But um, I mean, I mean, wow, honestly, wow, the, the, not good, not good caliber opponents should beat those type of guys if you're going to make a run into the UFC. Now, Sapabak Safarov is terrible. He's really, he, he's not that good a fighter and the guy is there to be hit, he's here, there to be bombed on. But what he did show in the fight with John Belanti is that he actually had a bit more success in that fight than I think I gave him credit for. I thought he actually got, kind of got blown out of the water in that one when it was actually not the case. He actually had in, uh, imprints in that fight where he looked uh, in the fight and landed some decent shots there. I picked Nick uh, last night, kind of off a whim. Like I said, I'd watched nothing on him. I've watched some fights today. And <laughs> honestly, I think it's who lands first here. I think it's Sapabek Zap- Safarov has a really good opportunity to win a fight there. So I'm going to, like like I said, on the huddle, I did not watch any any of these guys' fights. I went and watched some fights, and I'm going to change my pick from Nikolai over to Sapabek Safarov, even though that feels so dirty in saying that. I mean, Sapabek Safarov ain't good. Uh, I kind of hope he wins, and then we get a better line on future opponents going forward. But honestly, fight could kind of go either way. I'll take the dog. I don't think I think he's plus near yeah, plus two hundred over here in the UK, which is a little crazy for a guy with a blown up record like um, his opponent has. Like I say, not confident. I'll take the dog. Sapabek Safarov to win. I'll go knockout. I'll go knockout in the second round. But that could that fight could get sloppy very very quickly in that one there. Moving on, lightweight division. We have Mark Diacchese against uh, Joseph Duffy. Good fight, good matchmaking, good um, good matchmaking for this part of the world. Um, two notable guys, uh, two guys I actually like a lot. Seen come up through the the regionals, obviously. Joseph Duffy, I thought last time out there was something he did not look. He just looked off to me, and not not taking away anything from James Vick, because James Vick did the business there. I thought that he just looked off, and James Vick got him out of there. Um, you look at his UFC wins, they're kind of garbage. Jake Lindsay, Ivan George, Mitch Mitch Clark, Reza Madadi. Madadi is obviously his toughest one there. He, he's got three other finishes against... The thing is with Reza, at least he's tough. Mitch Clark and George and Lindsay, they aren't, they aren't tough. And he, he dealt with them the way you're supposed to, to deal with them. Um, obviously comes out a TriStar, really good boxing. It was a bit of a box. He went away and did some boxing for a little bit, but it's got some nice jujitsu, like he showed again, that triangle choke in Glasgow away back in 2015. But that was coming on nearly four years ago. The two times he's made the step up, he's lost. I mean, I thought he gave a good account of himself against Pori, obviously, but Pori's just a different beast, different animal, uh, different level altogether. Um, like I said, there was something, just something off with, with Joseph Duffy last, last fight there. Uh, interesting to see how he is here against the guy whose back is well and truly against the wall 
And I, I think that Diakese could be a good fighter. I'm just not sure if he's ready to put it all together yet. Obviously, I think though that win was it two years ago, it would have been now. Uh, over Timu Paklin, was it two years ago? That's actually interesting. Was it three years ago? Two years ago. I think that got to his head a little bit. Honestly, I think that... I mean, I don't think he looked overly impressive in the Frankie Perez fight. I thought that was closer than it needed to be. Got the job done. But then obviously got that highlight reel knockout and went to American top team. I think he was there before the Pakalan fight, actually. But... Um, Went to American top team, and th th to be fair, he got matched up with with tough, tough guys. Drucker Close is a, a spoiler fighter that likes to put you against the cage. Really hard to look good against. Dan Hooker's just a well-rounded mixed martial artist, a really solid fighter in every aspect, very tough as well. And Hat Parast is going to be a really good fighter. And he, got to, he was a big underdog in that one, came through... Um, and showed that he's got a lot of qualities. He fights next week. I'm looking forward to actually watching him fight again. 25, I actually think his, his birthday is this Saturday when he fights, so it'll be interesting to see if he can give himself a nice little present there and keep himself probably in the UFC. like the fact, actually, that he's not American top team for this one. He's predominantly did his uh, camp at home. I still think that he needs to get back to that kind of being aggressive in every aspect, but not being flashy. There's no need for the flashy stuff. He's got a lot of... Like he's got a good wrestling chops when he wants to use it. He's, I th just think his head's been turned a little bit. I think that that highlight reel knockout kind of turned his head a little bit. And now he's three three losses in a row, and he is well and truly looking um, like he's going to get the, the kind of pink slip from the UFC. And that's disappointing because I think this this is the guy that has the potential to be a really good fighter, maybe on the fringes of top fifteen potentially. But uh, still a lot of work to do. He's still a young guy in the, the game. If, if the UFC were to cut him, I think Bellator would snap him up for the European events. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, honestly, uh, I think this is going to be another close fight. And I, I like Mark Diakese in this one. Um, I'm a big fan of Joe Duffy. I have been for a long time. I, I like his skills. I like him as a man. I think he's a top quality guy. Um, but I just think that in this one, I think... Diakese is going to want it more. He's going to know that he's backed against the wall. Um, I think he has to try and wrestle here, honestly. I think he has to use some of his striking to try and get off and get into wrestling scenarios where he can maybe get some top position. Be careful with Duffy off his back because he could look for submissions and so on. Uh, and I don't think Joe Duffy at minus two, let me, what's this actually? What's his odds? Minus 230. No, I wouldn't be playing that at all. Uh, I'm going to go Mark Diakese, um via decision in this one here. Another decision to add to the ones we've had earlier on. I just feel a little, I feel better picking Mark Diakese and taking a, a shot in him there. Um, Arnold Allen, jo uh, Jordan Ronaldi. I'm picking Arnold Allen here. I'm pretty confident he can get this done. But in saying that, last time out did not look good at all against Mads Burnell, found a way to um, find a way to get it done with that front choke. But Mads Burnell fought a really good fight, really good takedowns, um, and just really, really kind of put it on him for that two and a half, what, two and a half rounds before he caught that submission. Um, the bet line's definitely coming down on this here. Jordan Ronaldo, he showed in his last fight what he can do, potentially do to Arnold Allen, um, like like he did, like Mads Burnell did, take him down, be heavy in top position, and don't let him get back to his feet. And in saying that, Jason Knight, for a 26, 27 year old guy, is one of the most short fighters in the UFC. He was short of confidence, um, would accept, he's always been the type of fighter to accept fighting off his back. And from there, he gives up rounds, plain and simple. Um, so yeah, Jordan Ronaldo's I think shown all the qualities of how he could win this fight. I just I struggle to see Arnold Allen making this those same mistakes again and being grounded down for um for fifteen minutes of the fight. But Ronaldo could go out there and show that he could do that. The one thing with Arnold Allen, like I always say, I just wish he would fight more. He's been in the UFC for four years. Um. 
had four fights. I mean, come on, man. He's a young 25-year-old guy. He needs to be in there fighting more often. And in saying that, the UFC were trying to give him a big fight against Gilbert Melendez. So they're trying to give him that big step up to to maybe make, make a bit of a name for himself. But things happen. Melendez pulled out. He was supposed to face Rick Glenn. Uh, then Arnold, I think, got a cut. Um, I just struggle to see Ronaldo keeping him down for 15 minutes. And I think on the feet, I think he's the sharper striker. I don't think they throw in a lot of volume but I do think that Arnold is the more sharper, speedier striker. Um, that's something I think I think he has to help a little bit because I think he has got some good striking. We just don't really see all too much of it. For me, I'm going to pick Arnold Allen. I'm actually going to pick him via TKO. I'll go. Um, I'll go second round TKO there for Arnold Allen. Moving on to the main card now: Jack Marshman against John Phillips. Um, I have one bet for this card so far. I've actually got another couple that I want to make. And uh, I'm betting John Phillips here. And I've saw a lot of this. He's the worst fighter in the UFC roster. And he's this and he's that. And that may be true. I'm not saying that he's not. But you have to look at matchups and style matchups for what it's worth. And if you're looking at this one here, both guys are strikers. Jack Marshman is that I think a bit more of a well-rounded fighter than what John Phillips is, but I think he's going to entertain this fight on the feet. And I, from there, I think John Phillips can catch him with a big shot. I honestly do. Um, if I was Jack Marshman, I'd be working takedowns and looking to get this fight to the ground because that is what is the deficiency of, of John Phillips. You can take him down. Uh, and if you've got any kind of sort of submission game, you can find a submission like Charles Bird did. Um, but be careful because John Phillips back in the, the days in, of Cage Warriors used to get taken down very, very easily but would find a submission a couple of times. Chris Fields, there was another guy which I forget is what his name is. Uh, now, uh, caught, I think it was a triangle choke that kind of came out of nowhere. But um, John Phillips, since he's come into the UFC, he hasn't looked great. Didn't look great against Charles Bird. Sh- looked a little bit better against a really tough opponent in Kevin Holland. Had a couple of aspects in that fight where he hit him with some big shots and Kevin Holland didn't really like it too much, but Holland being smart, used teep kicks to the body, hurt him a few times, had a couple of takedowns in there as well. Uh, Jack Marshman, the better, I think, technical boxer. I think he's got more of a boxing skill set, um, a really good boxing skill set. Can take a shot, um, can give a shot, sorry, but and can take one, but has to be careful because there's fights when he's been knocked out with one shot before in the past. Um, Abu Azatar um, caught him with a good shot, knocked him out in the first round. Uh, so, yeah, two Welsh guys here. I think they're going to throw down. I just, I'd just, i be surprised if Jock Marshman comes in and goes for a takedown here. I really would. I think that would be his way to victory if he could do it. I just don't think it's going to be a case. I think these guys are going to throw. And I think John Phillips is going to knock him out in the first round. So I bet him at plus 163. I don't know whether I'm going to make him my bet of the week for the, as an underdog because there is a few other underdogs I like that I have picked. Um, but I am going to pick him via first round knock. I just think it's a good style matchup for him. I think that he's more powerful than Jack Marshman, even though Marshman's went in there. And, I mean, he hurt, um, hey, who was it? Maheta, Thiago Santos with some strikes as well. I just think John Phillips will catch him with a big shot and knock him out in the first round. So uh, round one knockout for the White Mike Tyson, <laughs> which is a stupid nickname, but I'll pick him to, to win this fight here. Moving on, Danny Roberts against Claudio Silva. Uh, close fight. Claudio Silva, you know what? Claudio Silva is a type of guy that will fight you anywhere, whether it be in the hotel, the street, obviously in the cage, but he is like... Him and Nordin Taleb in Liverpool were throwing each other daggers and were like had to be separated on numerous occasions. Clyde Silva was just ready to go. He was he, he didn't like the disrespect that was coming his way from Nordin Taleb. Um and I did not see that coming. I thought Nordin Taleb was going to be uh, fight smart and, and don't try and engage with Clyde Silva up close. And that's what happened and he got caught. And um once you go to the ground with Clyde Silva, the guy's really good. He's got a lot of submission skills. He's did this camp in Brazil due to family reasons. My co-host and then when we huddled, John did an interview with him. I'm going to see over the weekend there. Usually he's a fighter who bases himself out of London, uh, out of Team Titan. 
um, but had to go back home to Brazil for this one here. When I was speaking to him at Liverpool last year, he was coming back off a long time off, like nearly four years, um, a lot of injuries, and he says that injuries that he carries to this day. Um, the way he wins his fight, in my opinion, is if he can get this to the ground, I think that Danny Roberts leaves openings. So Wada got him down, had opportunities to get submissions. I think if this goes into this part of the fight with Silva and he gets those opportunities, I think he will tap him out. On the feet, I think Danny Roberts can completely outbox this guy and I don't want to say um, outclass him on the feet, but I think he is the better boxer, the better striker uh, and just a really solid overall fighter. Very tough. Um, a little bit concerned about his gas tank a little bit. But we've seen that he can come through that, have a second wind, and go into win fights like he did in his, 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 his Zawada fight. Uh, this is a tough fight because Claudio Silva is uh, an animal. He's a bit of an animal, uh, and you have to be very, very careful. But I just think the speed of Danny Roberts and the boxing ability is going to be too much. I think uh, he has to be smart and not kind of get backed up and, and, and let... Claudio Silva get his arms and his hands around him because if he does, then he has got a massive opportunity to get this fight to the ground where he could start to work his game. So for me, I'm going to go Danny Roberts. I'm actually going to go via TKO early round number three here. I think it gets a little bit scrappy. I think that Claudio will tire out and I think that Danny Roberts will come in here and I think his striking will just be the, the defining point in this fight and he'll win that fight there. So uh, Danny Hot Chocolate Roberts for a TKO victory there. Nathaniel Wood against the uh, Teco Canone is up next. For me, I think this is a really big showcase fight for Nathaniel Wood in his home city of London. Uh, Any time that he's fought in London before, especially in Cage Warriors, the guy has showed uh, he's gave us great fights, he's gave us great finishes. Um, and he's looked good in his UFC debut. I mean, I want to say this. I cannot believe that he was the betting underdog at points against Henri Yule. And people were really confident in Henri Yule. I think it's maybe come off the Barrow win, obviously, but uh, skill for skill, Nathaniel Wood was a better fighter than Henri Yule, and he showed he completely outclassed Henri Yule in every facet, got takedowns on the feet. He, he kind of... Um, Yule's kind of unorthodox and very long, but once he kind of figured out um, what Yule was kind of doing and he was very repetitive with his strikes and with his movements he worked that out and completely outclassed him I know he came out and said that he was not uh, impressed with his performance really because he wanted to get the finish he's that type of guy he loves to get finishes um, but looked good all the same and I cashed him as a good underdog there so at plus 100 I was like licking my lips when I saw that line and uh, I got him there in this match up here I again I think he is the better all-around fighter in every aspect of the game. But Quinones is tough and he's shown that he's making improvements fighting out of Mexico uh, with his last two wins over Rivas and Ishihara. Like his, his UFC wins aren't great either, actually, when you look at them there. Um, Chimio Morales, Joey Gomez, Rivas, Ishihara. None of those guys are with the UFC anymore, I don't believe. So, yeah... Um, Solid, solid fighter. Tough, hard to beat. Um, and is making improvements. I just think that, again, showcase fight for Nathaniel Wood. For me, I'm going to parlay. I'm going to find a parlay, I think, with one guy from here and one guy from next week for around even money, I think it is. Um, I just think this is a good, good fight. The only thing I'd worry about is just in case that... Um, Nathaniel comes out and maybe wants to brawl with Teko. Now, Teko hasn't got big, big strikes or big power, but just don't don't entice him into that. I think he, I think if he, he was to work his all-around game, he might be able to get Quinones out of there, but he's tough. I think he's only been taken out once, and that was against Davi Hamos, who's a, a beast. Um, so I'm picking Nathaniel Wood. Fairly confident he can get it done. Um, does he get a finish, though? That's what I'm thinking. I think he does. I'll go with that. I'll go for Nathaniel Wood to win via TKO in the second round. I think he catches him with some big strikes uh, and puts him down. So, yeah, I, Nathaniel Wood for the win there. Volkan Ozdemir, Dominic Reyes up next. This line I don't really agree with. 
too much. Dominic Reyes, minus 270. I think I've seen him as high as minus 310, I think it was. Um, now, I've never really been a, a believer in Volcanos to me at all. I don't think people will say, no, this guy's the top five lightweight. You know, he won a couple of fights to get himself there. I don't, and got himself a title shot out. I don't believe he's that great a fighter, but he is very, uh, he's got some powerful strikes, obviously. Uh, I think he's got a gas tank, which is not great, and he showed that. I think Anthony Smith actually fought a really good fight last time out against uh, Volkan. Kind of gassed him out early. He, took some, he did take some shots, but eventually the gas tank started to deplete for, for Volkan, and he leaves openings aplenty. He did it in the OSP fight. OSP couldn't capitalise uh, in that one there. But he definitely, definitely leaves openings Um and I think when I when I watch Dominic Reyes, I think as a, a technical striker, he's far better. He just has to. I think he can actually catch Volkan Ozdemir with a, with a counter counter shot here when Volkan's getting too aggressive because Volkan is he is going to come forward um, and look to land that bomb. That's what he's, he's did in his UFC tenure so far uh, with his wins that he's got. But when he's made that, I mean, I couldn't believe he got the title shot against um, Daniel Cormier. And what made it even worse was I seen people betting him. And I'm like, dudes, why what, what are you doing? Like betting Vulcan Ostom against Daniel Cormier. And he just kind of got blown out of the water there. And Anthony Smith fought a great fight after that. Uh, Dominic Reyes in his UFC tenure, he's won his four fights, looked fairly impressive. Uh, I, I still think he knocked out OSP last time out that fight. Uh, 229 I thought he he looked great earlier on he started to fade a little bit uh, but was always in control of that fight Jerry Kanye another good win to have in your record Jeremy Kimball Joachim Christensen that's just your entry into the UFC really dealt with them how you're supposed to and, and knocked him out in the first knocked obviously Jared Kanye out in the first as well so uh, I actually think he's going to knock out Volkan Ozdemir here I think Volkan's going to get too aggressive and I think he's going to eat a counter shot and he's going to roll his side and I think Dominic Reyes is going to catch him with some some big ground and pound and, and stop him here. If not, I can see him finishing him later on in the fight, if not getting a very, very comprehensive 30-27 decision. But for me, I can't see... I'd be, I'd be, would I be surprised? Well, Volkan... I think I would. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Volkan came out here and won this fight. So I'll go Dominic Reyes via TKO round number... I'll go first round, actually. I'll go first round TKO for, Vol, um, for Dominic Reyes, sorry. Co-main cool event of the night, Leon Rocky Edwards against Gunny Nelson. Really good co-main cool event, really good fight to make for this kind of market. Um, Leon Edwards, just a kind of quiet guy in that division, but with a really sound, solid uh, fighting style, with his only two losses in the UFC, was a very, very close split loss to Clyde Silva way back in 2014, and uh, Cameron Usman, who's now got the belt. So, Apart from that, he's looked very, very good, very composed, uh, good in kind of every aspect. Got some signature wins on there. I think Tumanov's a great win. Albert um, Vicente Luque, I thought was a great win. Brian Barbarina's a good win. The one fight, obviously, the Cowboy one, where he won 48-47 across the judges' cards. I think he gave Donald more opportunities in that fight than he kind of needed to, if I'm being honest. Um, but, yeah, I think that... Uh, He's always going to be one of these guys sitting right on the, the verge of top 10, if not just inside the top 10. Um, fairly fairly decent volume. What I do like is his low calf kicks, and that's something that might be something that's open in this fight here because Gunny Nelson with his, with his uh, karate kind of stance, he leaves that leg out there to really be kind of hit at, and especially from the southpaw stance, he might get some of those inside kind of leg kicks on Gunny's front leg, so when he kind of switches stance as well. Outstruck Donald, uh, but did get taken down by Sabota, did get taken down by Donald Cerrone, um, and Luki got him a couple of times as well. So, yeah, I think that the one that kind of really shone at me was the Peter Sabota one, where he, Sabota is known as a bit of a Jets guy. Um, that's kind of the background that he had. Um and I don't think he should be entertaining that here against Gunnar Nelson. I think that if Gunny gets the opportunity to get him to the ground, he's got that elite skill set that um, he's got that elite skill set that he could just one time 
get him down uh, and lock up a submission. I think if he does get him down in numerous rounds, he will win very, very not not easily, but I think he, he's got an opportunity to uh, win those fights on the feet. I don't think Gunny's a fish out of water. I think that he's he's got that decent uh, karate kind of that he's got. I think his volume's very low, but we all know he kind of uses that to to clinch up, to, to look to take the fight to the ground. I think he came through an absolute big, big opponent in Alex Cowboy Oliveira last time out because that guy is easy for nobody. He's very awkward, um, very awkward to look good against. Uh, Came out there, took a few licks to start off with, but once he got the fight to the ground and he gets to that back, once he gets that back, there's no getting away for the guy. So, um, yeah, like I say, over three, over five rounds, I think I'd be more confident in Gunny. Um, definitely, three rounds is a little bit suspect because if Leon starts start off quick, then it could be hard to uh, get a decision against him. But I think he's going to get this fight to the ground at least one time, and that's all that Gunny needs. Sometimes, if he can get that one opportunity, he will use that and uh, can easily get a submission against a majority of guys. The guys are specialists on the ground, where I think that. Damon Meyer was just light years ahead of where Gunny is. But if Gunny gets you down, he can easily, easily rack up a submission. Love the fact that he's did this camp in Iceland. Staying away from SBG. They've got a great, great camp there in Iceland, that Mjolnir, uh, Mjolnir gym. I can never say that properly. Um, but I had a look online at their gym and it looks great, great facilities. Um, so, yeah, uh, close fight. I can see why people are going with Leon Edwards. My preference is Gunnar Nelson. I think that he can, if he finds this, finds a way to get this fight to the ground, I think he'll submit uh, Leon Edwards. And I'm going to go Gunnar Nelson via submission. So, yeah, going for the win there. And the main event of the night, Darren Till against um, Gamebred, Jorge Masvidal. Looking forward to seeing Masvidal. I said in the Huddle podcast, I think this guy is a, is a legend. And I know what I mean. Like, listen... He's just like, you know, these guys that was scrap anywhere, um, the back in in your garden, in the streets, obviously in the cage, um, and he's just a hard guy to look good against. And he's, I mean, the guys that he's lost to are not bad guys at all. Um, he's one of these guys that is down to scrap anywhere, anytime. Um, weight divisions don't don't really matter. He's been calling out Bispin for long enough, but you look at his losses, especially in the UFC. Ayakinta, top five lightweight. Benson Henderson, former champ. Lawrence Larkin, on his days, a really tough guy to beat. Then lost to Maya, who's just a bad stylistic matchup if he gets a holdie, which he did in that fight. And Stephen Thompson, another one of those guys who's just hard to look good against with his style. Um, but when he's on, he's on. And when he, when you don't, uh, like in that Cerrone fight, you give him zero respect, went out there and just blew him out of the water in the second round. That should that should have been finished after the first, actually. Um Good technical boxing. Uh, won't, won't have to cut too much weight here. So that might be an advantage because Darren's going to have to cut weight. Um, I Like I said in the, the Huddle podcast as well, I don't see... Uh, I don't see Darren fighting at Wilterweight. I don't see why he has to keep himself around at Wilterweight anymore. I think he should move up to 185. He's not going to get to Cameron Usman. I don't think he wants to get near Cameron Usman because Cameron would run through him, in my opinion. Um and I mean that performance against Tyron Woodley was actually embarrassing. And Darren Tills came out and said that through nothing, the only things that really happened in that fight was he clinched up a little bit in the second round. Woodley threw one right hand, knocked him down, and then he submitted him from there. So that was an embarrassing performance from Darren Till. And we all know what he's about. He's he's about um being the fighter, leading, leading coming forward, kind of pushing you back. Um I don't think he will. This will be the type of fight where Masvidal will really push him back. I think he will give Till the opportunity to be the aggressor in the fight, and maybe Masvidal will look to counter when Till decides to throw. Thing is, with Till though, he can he can fight two ways. He fought very aggressive against someone like Cowboy, but obviously in the the, the Wonder Boy fight in Liverpool, he kind of fought a slow paced fight, picked his picked his opportunities, and kind of went from there. Um. And won, won that fight and eventually kind of the one big shot maybe won him the fight, honestly. I, in the, the crowd, I thought Wonderboy had an opportunity to win, but it was close. It could have went really either way. But um, 
Yeah, I struggle. Um, the one play, the one thing that I do think Mars Vidal can maybe use to his advantage here is maybe push this fight late. And if Dan does have a rough cut or whatever, that could start to come in because, like, like I say, Jorge's a, like a, a, an all-time vet. Like he's been around for a long, long time, fought some big guys, and he, he's got a good gas tank himself, fairly decent output, but it's dangerous at any point of the fight with his hands. Um, I'm still I'm still not convinced with Darren's. If, it, if it's a slow-paced fight, going to five rounds like he did in the Wonder Boy fight, that might actually work out for him. I don't see it being as slow as that. So I can see maybe the gas tank kind of depleting a little bit like that, but I think that he's going to be leading the dance I think he's going to go up early over Masvidal. I think Masvidal maybe come back comes back late, but I can see Dan Till just winning the decision like 46, 49, 46, maybe even a 48, 47. But um, yeah, I'll go Dan Till. Uh, I think the line actually in Masvidal is a little bit off. Let me check that line. Was he minus plus 215? Plus, uh, he was playing plus 215 earlier on. He's plus 200. I don't think that's a bad shot if you want to take a shot. No, I wouldn't bet, bet Dan Till at minus 240. Um, so yeah, I'll pick Dan Till via a UD. So guys, that is my picks for uh, UFC London. We're back next week in Nashville for uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson against Anthony Pettis. Why they're making that much up, I have no idea. Uh, as an Anthony Pettis fan, it's just wow, wow, pretty much. So until next week, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your bets. If you're betting anything, you can check out my bets uh, My bets on bet MMA tips. I'm probably going to make him four or five plays this week. I like the card from a betting perspective. Until next week from UFC Nashville, peace, take care, and I enjoy the fights. <laughs>